Oh. Man, I'm really starting to look like a caveman. Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here. Now, if you're a self-recording guitar player that maybe records your own music in your bedroom or your home studio, or your project studio, I'm willing to bet that you're probably making at least one of these toxic habits or mistakes. And I don't want this for you. I want you to avoid these mistakes so you can make real progress with your mixes and productions. Let's dive into it. All right, so once again, I apologize for the lack of uploads. I've been so busy working on my new studio and I'm super pumped to announce that construction will begin very soon within the coming weeks. My studio designer, Wilson Harwood, shout out to Wilson, check out his channel, Soundproof Your Studio, right here on YouTube. Wilson's almost done with the plans and once the plans are done, we start building and I'll be documenting the entire process right here on the channel. And also check out Wilson's channel. There's a link below in this video's description and you can learn all about soundproofing your own studio. Um, now, after running this YouTube channel over the last four years or so, I know quite well that 80% of you guys are guitar players and people send me mixes constantly. And unfortunately, the habits I'm about to share with you and the mistakes I'm about to share with you, you must avoid like the plague. Because more often than not, these mistakes show up in the mixes that people send me. And I've been guilty of them myself as a guitar player myself. So I just want to help you out and uh, help you make better sounding music. Okay, toxic habit number one that self-recording guitar players often make is that they ignore the importance of bass guitar in mixes and productions. The thing is so many of us get caught up in guitar tone and riffs and gear that we completely forget the importance of bass guitar in your production. And also a great sounding bass guitar will give you the effect of a better sounding guitar tone. I know there are people out there that come to this realization I see in the comments and this is a good thing because it's really true. A mix is a holistic group of instrumentation and focusing only on your guitar parts and your guitar playing and your guitar tone is a massive mistake because that's only one small part of the entire system or the entire production. A killer sounding bass tone and a killer bass performance will 100% enhance the sound of your guitars, especially when they're interlocking and working well together. And it'll help enhance the sound of your mix and production as a whole, which will make mixing so much easier. Believe me. Okay, toxic habit number two that I hear from guitar players is that guitar players tend to blame their bad sounding or amateur sounding mixes on their guitar tone. Now the truth is if your performances are well played and they're nice and edited and everything else is in balance, you're using the right drum tones. And like I said before, a great bass tone, great sounding vocals. Even if your tone is subpar, your mix should still sound pretty good. Your song should be pretty simple to mix. Guitar tone is nowhere near as important as people think. You'd be amazed if you ever dive into pro level multi-tracks that maybe a pro producer recorded or produced. When you listen to the guitars on their own, they're not always amazing sounding, but when you put everything together, all of a sudden the guitars sound amazing because the mix, song, and production sound amazing. Now to take this one step further, let's dive into toxic habit number three. When guitar players blame their bad tone on gear, that really doesn't matter as much as they think. Let me give you some examples. Pickups, guitar cables. I actually know people who think <laughs> that guitar cables will change their tone. It won't. DI boxes. Dumb stuff that absolutely has no effect or way less of effect than you would think. The truth is you can have a cheapo guitar with stock pickups and if you're a good guitar player and everything is well dialed in and your guitar is well intonated and you're recording a good song and everything is edited and the rest of your production holistically is where it should be, pickups, DI boxes, cables don't really matter. Now, yes, if you're using a broken cable that's cutting in and out, maybe your DI box is crackly when you move the cable or something like that, or maybe your pickups are or wire properly, of course, in these cases, that would be a detriment to your productions. But let's be real. Most of us don't have these issues. We just blame our bad sounding tone on the gear when it's just a lack of knowledge and skill for producing. All right, toxic habit number four. A lot of self-recording guitar players don't take the time to program their drums properly. Again, we're so caught up in our riffs and our guitar playing that we forget to program our drums to sound like an actual drummer 
drumming. I hear a lot of program drums that are all pegged out, or maybe the fills are just kind of random, or maybe there are no fills, or maybe the drum programming is playing stuff that no live drummer could ever play in a million years. In other words, a lot of the times the drum programming is just an afterthought because again, we're so caught up in our guitar parts and our guitar playing and our guitar tone, which is a mistake if you want to produce pro level results. Take the time to program your drums properly. It is well worth it. Okay, and very similarly, number five, a lot of self-recording guitar players don't give a crap about vocals. This drives me insane. People will send me mixes that are just riffs, just riffs. No vocals, no lead melody, just random riffs to program drums. Sometimes there's not even bass guitar in the track itself. And I have news for you. These are not mixes. These are just ideas or like a scratch pad demo kind of thing. Now that's totally fine. I have tons of these myself on my computer, but you cannot compare this to your favorite records. You gotta remember when a pro producer produces a track, they're thinking again of everything. The way that the vocal parts interlock with the guitars and the way that the bass works with the kick drum. Everything works together like a glove from a compositional standpoint and also sonically. And if you're not worried about vocals at all and you're just worried about your impulse responses or the EQ on your guitar tracks, you are in the wrong zone, believe me. Worry about that stuff later once you have the rest of your music recorded and well produced. That's my advice. What's the expression? Don't put the cart before the horse. There you go. And this leads nicely into toxic habit number six. Self-recording guitar players focus way too much on riffs instead of actual songs. Now, if you're writing crazy technical death metal or progressive rock or progressive metal or whatever, then maybe this doesn't really apply to you. But if your music features verses, choruses, solos, a bridge, vocals, obsessing about your riffs is sort of a waste of time. Let me give you a simple example here. Think of, I don't know, Pantera, the song Walk. That's a good example. The most simple, straightforward, basic riff of all time. But the song, is amazing. People will often send me tracks where they're asking about their guitar riffs and their guitar performances and their stuff all over the place. Two guitar parts that don't really make any sense. And of course the bass is just drowned out or sometimes not even playing the right root note that's supposed to take place alongside the riffs that they wrote. Because again, guitar players are often so hyper-focused on details that are not as important as they think in the grand scheme of things when it comes to production. If your passion is riffing out and that's where it ends, that's totally cool. I'm only speaking to you if you're looking to improve your results and if you're looking to produce mixes that more closely resemble what you hear on your favorite records. Okay, the big tamale here. There is an epidemic for some reason in recent years of people recording guitar tracks that are not in tune. Now, I don't know if this is just becoming more commonplace or just maybe more people are recording at home, but people will send me mixes all the time where they'll ask me about their mastering chain, the clipping on their snare drum, the EQ on their lead guitars. When the first thing I notice as soon as I press play on the file is their guitars are out of tune or sections of the song are out of tune, especially when the guitars are playing alongside the bass guitar. A lot of times the higher notes are pulling sharp or the open chords, one of the strings is out or the leads are flat or sharp. Yeah, this is a problem. Your mix is not going to sound professional if your guitars are not in tune. And I don't know why, but more and more, especially recently, a lot of the mixes people send me feature out of tune guitars. Just happened this week. So please, if you're looking to produce pro level results, make sure your guitar tracks are in tune. Even if you have to tune for every riff or every section, when I have bands in the studio, sometimes we will tune for every section of the song. Sometimes I'll tune the guitar slightly different. If they're playing a section of the song, that's up high that the intonation might be out even if the guitar is properly intonated it happens sometimes different guitar players play differently every guitar is a little bit different so you really have to take the time to make sure that your guitar tracks as a whole are in tune with one another and of course the bass and alongside the vocals so as you know by now if you've been watching this channel for any length of time pro results do not come from gear they come from the right mentality they come from the right workflows and from knowledge. I don't want you getting stuck in this constant loop that we all get stuck in. I want you making better sounding music today. And because of this, I'm offering you direct access right now for absolutely free to my exclusive training for dead simple ways to massively improve your recordings and mixes. Now in this training, you'll learn my number one technique for prepping heavy guitar tracks that virtually mix themselves. You'll also learn how to create instantaneous clarity within your mixes using any old stock EQ plugin. You'll also learn my approach for taking control over the levels in your mixes so that instruments stop fighting with one another. And then finally, how you can craft radio ready vocal mixes using only stock plugins. Now, 
I'm gonna be honest, full disclosure here. If you're one of these people that's constantly scrolling through TikTok and you have the attention span of a squirrel, don't waste your time. This training is meant for people who are serious about production like I am, and it's almost an hour long in length. Now, if you are serious and you really want to improve the sound of your mixes and productions, you can have access to the training right now. There's a link below in this video's description. So I'm curious to know, are you guilty of any of these toxic habits? Leave a comment below in this video's description. I'd love to hear what you've been up to. And until next time, drink that spin drift. <laughs>